first off, I'm amazed at, at just how many people are here in a small space to see a large group of Katahdin paintings done by artists contemporary and then with this new edition of just a little 19th century, this lady who did not make it into my book because I didn't know about her, but she would have been the earliest woman in the Katahdin book, uh, 1875. That's pretty much just before Frederick Church comes up in 1877. She's there. He was there earlier, but you know, it's, it's pretty incredible to me that this stuff keeps popping up. I just got an email today. Carl and I are working on a new book about Acadian and MDI. And I got an email from the Northeast Harbor Library telling me that there's a sketchbook or a diary that has drawings from Sutton's Island, 1869, by a woman artist. So she is going to go into that section of our new book. So this stuff just keeps happening. And it's, it, to me, it's very, very exciting as, as someone who... Um, because we're going to talk about volume two. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Tonight. I was going to make a, a segue from what Deb was saying back there that if you go online to YouTube and you go to um, Chats with Champions, David Little, you will get Carl's introduction to our talk at the Skidampha Library and my one hour talk about the book. Uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't heard my talk, I gave 27 talks last year in the state, and probably a fair number of you were unable to make it. But that doesn't mean you can't see it. It is online. It's still there. I think I, I, think I sang a couple of bars of We Are the Champions. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I was going to thank everybody. Uh, there's so many people to thank, but um, it's, it's a great privilege for me to, to be here and to see everybody and to sort of continue this, let's say with a question mark, Katahdin tradition. I think that it's larger and larger and larger in a way that is just, I, I don't understand it, but all the, these, this, this group of artists that are here, there are only so many that are in the book. And then there's so many that are not, that I don't know. I don't know them personally. I haven't seen their artwork. We had to judge the show digitally, so we never got to see the originals until they arrived. So it was a big challenge. I've never done that before, and it was very, it was very difficult. Um, but we've come a long way from slides. We were talking. <laughs> so I'm not going to carry on too much longer. Um, Carl, I gave Carl a poem to read that I brought with me <clears throat> to just sort of give you a different feel for Katahdin in a different medium than in paint or in charcoal or in pencil or in... This is a poem, and yeah, I don't I know that actually, much about Daniel Hoffman. I can give but you a little intro, actually, about him. David uh, Daniel Hoffman passed away last year. He was a former poet laureate of the United States. He had a, a home in, in uh, Cape Rozier. And this is a poem of his called Climbing Katahdin. Hoisting yourself from finger niche to toe hole, approaching the knife edge, a deep, shagged ravine gapes on the one side, the eye of a blueberry silver pool steep down the dizzy drop other, your breath short, each rib rasping, grasping the thin air above the timber line, clinging to the desolate rocks below the snow line. You can believe, as others have believed, this stony ridgepole bracing heaven, the long house of the mountain, Katahdin. You breathe his breath. Hoisting yourself atop the spined ridge you'll find on a slight plateau, stretching toward the peak's rise, huckleberries growing beside a spring. You laugh at the surprise of it and chew in the icy air, bursting berries big as birds' eggs. Your lips and tongue relish the purple. Then arise from feasting on silvery frosted fruit in the desolation to hoist yourself from fingertip to toe hole, each breath grasping as high up as the mountain allows you. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, awesome.